What's happening everybody, it's Peter here, and I'm hanging out in the garage again tonight, working on the boat, working on the tackle. Uh, nothing new really. Um, and I was going through some gear, I'm building this kind of soft plastic wall that you see behind me here, uh, with some grid wall I picked up, and, uh, and really excited about that, just to take some weight out of my boat as I'm running around, and also just make my life easier when I'm digging through my soft plastics compartment, and trying to find something. Um, it definitely would make my life easier if I had about half the stuff that I'm carrying around. <laughs> so that's kind of my goal with that, is I'm trying to just dumb down my uh, soft plastic arsenal that I take with me every day, and then I can kind of pick off the wall as I need, um, you know, depending on what lake I'm going to or whatever. But as I was kind of going through my soft plastics, I was thinking a lot about, you know, as I pulled stuff out of the boat, I was thinking, man, I've caught so many fish on this, I've caught so many fish on that. There's some stuff I've never caught fish on. Um, and I sort of was thinking, I should do a quick video just talking about uh, probably the most fish catchingest lure I've ever owned, and uh, and it is a soft plastic, and it's one I've been fishing since I was probably 10 years old. I remember getting my first pack of them. Um, my brother actually got a pack, and I got a pack in two different colors, and, and that sort of ignited uh, a little bit of competition as well as a, a passion for catching fish on, on this bait and on soft plastics in general. Um, but the lure I'm talking about, we'll get right into it, is the Zoom Finesse Worm. And uh, the Zoom Finesse Worm, you all know it, you all love it. It's uh, one of those classic, classic styles of bait, just a straight tail worm, um, but it's got a killer fall in the water. The shape is just perfect for creating a subtle wiggling action as it goes down. And, uh, and the versatility is the name game of this bait. That is totally why it's the most fish catching fish of all time for, for me personally, excuse me. Um, it's because you can do so many different things with it. I've caught fish on this thing, uh, pond fishing with a two aught or a one aught. Uh, straight chank hook or, or a wide gap hook, just snaking it around over the surface, um, especially around the spawn time. That's like just a killer way to catch fish. Classic floating worm, light line, spinning rod, flipping it around the cover, snaking it through, killer. And that's pretty spicy how I started fishing the bait. Wacky rig. Um, occasionally I'll take an ultralight rod, which is in the car, and I'll wacky rig one of these things around the spawn and just fish it up against, you know, shallow boat dock, shallow cover, whatever's around, and that's killer. And then I've caught a geez, shaky head, 16th, 8th, 3 16 quarter, 3 8 ounce shaky head, all the way from a foot of water, all the way up to, you know, 35 foot of water, catching small mouth, catching spots, catching large mouth. Um, incredibly versatile, incredibly effective. Just get yourself like a classic spot remover style. Uh, shaky head with a small two odd or even three odd hook will work, but two odd's really ideal. Um, and just drag this thing around any kind of cover you have in your lake and I guarantee you eventually run into some fish with it. Um, how else? Carolina rigging. I've caught so many fish on this thing, Carolina rigging. Again, two odd hook, one odd hook, three quarter ounce weight or half ounce weight, bomb that thing out there over some deep cover and just drag it along, drag it along. And uh, it just has this great fluttering action as it goes through the water behind that bait. And I've caught a ton of fish doing that. Small mouth, large mouth. I want to say spotted bass too, but it may not be true. I don't know how many spotted bass I've caught on the Carolina rig in my days, but uh, definitely small ones and large ones for sure. Uh, yeah, so that's sort of why it's been the most effective bait for me of all time. It's just the versatility. You can wacky rig it, shaky head, fish a weightless Carolina rig. Heck, you can um, nip the end of it off and throw it on the head rig. You can uh, put it on a finesse jig trail, as use it as a finesse jig trailer. I've got plenty of fish doing that too. Uh, it's just incredibly versatile. So. Uh, the big the big thing, I guess, is color and determining how and when to choose different colors. And um, I keep it pretty dang simple. I, 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 I really go for, I have five here that I want to show you, or six here that I want to show you. Um, I go for a high contrast first. Um, this is motor oil chartreuse, like super bright, super vibrant in the water. And that's something I reserve pretty much for the weightless technique, um, or maybe a shaky head if the water's fairly muddy. Um, I love a chartreuse tail. You don't have to do motor oil, but I do like the motor oil. You can do watermelon chartreuse, green pumpkin chartreuse. The good thing about uh, Zoom is they have every, every color under the sun, so you can sort of mix and match however you please. But um, that motor oil chartreuse is one I keep on the boat, especially during the springtime of the year when those fish are up shallow, getting ticked off with bluegill coming nearby. This just does a really good job getting them to uh, react to a bait. Next one I keep around is a bait fish color, and I pretty much reserve this one for drop shotting. Um, I do a lot of drop shotting in the summertime for spots and smallmouth, and uh, and just nose hooking that and drop shotting it around rocks and anywhere you've got fish feeding on bait fish that can be super super effective. I guess the two main colors I throw most of the time, keeping it really simple. I keep a big ba big bag of black ones on the boat, 
because I think that's just the most versatile color. And I keep a bunch of green pumpkin nearby too. Uh, green pumpkin and black are two just classic colors. High contrast, they show up really well in a lot of different water clarities. And, uh, and they seem to just get bit anywhere you go, from Maine to South Carolina, anywhere in between. I've caught fish on them, shaky heading again, Carolina reading, doing it all, weightless, everything. So um, those are the two colors I mostly keep with me. Um, but I do keep a couple other ones nearby too. I keep something a little bit more natural blue gilly. This is a green pumpkin blue flash, which has been a perennial favorite of mine. It just has a really natural, you can kind of see it there. It's just got a really natural kind of bluish hue to it with some fleck in it. Shows up really nicely in muddy water, but also seems to produce really well in clear water too. And then when I get in super clear water, um, sometimes I, I like a little flash and flake, especially on a sunny day. So this watermelon magic tends to do really well for me. Um, especially on a shaky head and uh, spotted bass seem to really love that. So I guess those would be the six colors I just keep in the boat with me most of the time. Um, the one, the two I could probably do without are probably the first two I mentioned, the bait fish color and, uh, and a high contrast. Um, the high contrast, again, I kind of reserve that for the springtime and then the bait fish color is mostly for drop shotting. Um, but, but with a, a watermelon flash, a green pumpkin flash, black and green pumpkin. I really feel like I can cover all my bases from a foot of water out to 40 foot and, uh, and anywhere in between. So um, zoom finesse worm, definitely my all time fish catching bait. I don't think anything's ever been able to top that for me in terms of just quantity of fish uh, and quality too. I can think of a couple of fish in that six to seven pound range I've caught on these. And uh, gosh, I think this spring I caught a 718, so seven pounds, three ounces. It might have been on a trip worm, but it might have been on a zoom finesse worm um, on a shaky head, on a light shaky head. So uh, give them a go if you haven't already. If you're a beginner fisherman, I highly recommend getting yourself a few packs and kind of learning how to rig them, learning how to fish them. And I'm sure if you've been bass fishing for any period of time, uh, you're already familiar with how excellent these baits are. So keep plugging away with them, uh, catch a bunch of fish, and uh, tight lines, everybody. We'll talk to you later.